Is he drawing a snake? Shouldn't it be a programming tutorial? In a second we'll do something even more insane than that. We will build React application, it will be a command line application and it will be a snake game. So, if you're new to this channel, subscribe and let's go! One of the most powerful features of React is that it supports different renderers. That means you aren't limited with browser and DOM. Most famous example is React Native, but there are other technologies as well. React is actively being used in game dev to build UI, Battlefield 5 UI, Minecraft launcher, etc. But my mind was blown away when I saw Ink, React renderer that outputs to console to your terminal. Start by creating a folder for your application. We create folder snake game and run npx create ink app. It's almost the same as running create react app if you're familiar with that. This tool will just create a scaffold structure, basically all of the files and folders you need. Let's see what folder structure do we have here. We have cli.js. In this file we have our commands and their options defined. And in the end of this file we see that we render our UI. It's located in our UI.js file. And it will simply render text with hello and name that we pass to our application. By default it will output stranger. If you have used React before, this code should be pretty familiar to you. It's a simple functional component and it just outputs layout that we want to render. Let's run our application. If you did know the CLI tools before, you probably know that you have to link your commands while you develop them. In our case we don't have to do this because uh, create ink app already did it for us. So we can just run snake game. I didn't pass name so we have stranger instead of it or I can run it with a name parameter. Snake, snake, game, name, maxim. And now we passed my name. Let's go back to the code and remove this layout. Our first step will be to create the game field. Let's begin by creating two variables. First will be field size. It will store our field dimensions. Both width and height will be 16 blocks. I will also create constant field row. It will store pre-initialized row of blocks. Doesn't matter, vertical or horizontal. I'm going to create an array filled with numbers from 0 to 16. I use array destructuring syntax and create a new array of given length inside. Here I use field size as length of our array. And to get all the numbers from 0 to 16, I use keys of this array. Now we can render our field. Ink provides a bunch of components that you can use to render text, layout, maybe some styled components. Maybe some components for styling, like color, for example. You saw how it made the name in our application green. We will also use component called box. Think of it, think about, think of it as a div in HTML. It's just a simple block. So first we need to create a wrapping block. It will be our top level container. Inside of it we'll have a title, it will be a simple text, that will say snake game. I want the word snake to be green, so I'll wrap it into color component. After title I want another field, I want another block to hold our game field. It will also be a box. Now we'll use our field row to populate our field. We'll start with columns. I will use method map of the array to go through each key and output our column. It will be box that will contain our rows. Here we have a loop, we use map, so we need to provide key to our box component. In this case, it will be the y that we have as an attribute of our function. Now we do same, but for horizontal rows. 
I take X and output boxes. Each box also has to have key. Here it will be X. For now we'll just output dots inside of this box. By default boxes have a layout type flex. They're flex box. And you can provide props that will control their flex layout. For example here I will say flex direction column and same for this container as well. We don't use name prop anymore so we can remove it. Let's try to run our application. As you can see it now outputs the game field. But it's not centered. And also I didn't specify the color of our snake word. As I said before I want it to be green. To align items I will just provide align items attribute center. Let's run the game ag again. Now it's centered and we have our snake word green. Okay, now let's add items to our game. First let's add a food item. It doesn't have to be reactive, it will be added just once. So we don't have to add it inside of our app component. We will add it outside. Create const food item and it will hold x and y for the food item that we'll have. x will be math uh, round math random multiplied by field size. This is how we get random number from 0 to 16. We do same but for y. Okay, now we have our food item. We also need to have our snake. Let's define it as uh, snake segments. We also need to have snake. We'll have to, we also have to define snake, but unlike food item, snake will be reactive. We need to move it, we need to react on keyboard events, and we need to move it around the screen. So, first we will re remake our component a little bit, so it will have return statement now, and we'll be able to add some hooks in the beginning of this component. I rub it in round brackets for my document. And now I can define our snake segments and the setter for snake segments. Set snake segments. As uh, react use state hook. And we'll provide the default value. It will be an array. Actually, I created an object, but it needs to be an array of three segments. Each of the segments will have X and Y. And um, unlike food item that was randomly located on the screen, we will create specific coordinates. So for the first snake segment, it will be X equals eight and uh, y equals 8 as well. Now we can copy this one and paste it a couple of times. I will add commas. My snake will be directed vertically, so we'll have to edit y to be 7 and 6 for next segments. So now it will be 8. Why is it complaining? It's not. 8, 7, 6. And we can format our document again. Next step will be to display our food item and snake. To do this, we define a function. Function. It will be called get item. It will get x, y, and snake segments. And it will output what is in current cell. It's a bit messy because it will access food item through the, from the global scope, but whatever. The idea is that if x that we provide to this function equals food item x and y equals also equals food item y, then we need to display the food item. It will be a colored, we say, 
and it will be return color and here I want to have apple symbol and I want it to be red so it will be an apple and color will be red so if it wasn't food item then we check if then for each snake seg then for each snake segments we do map segment and for each of them we check if x equals if x if x equals segment x and y equals segment y then we return also colored item but in our case but in this case I want it to be just a square okay now if we now if our coordinates that we pass to the function x and y equals food item coordinates we will output red apple otherwise if it equals coordinates of one of the snake segments we will output a square that will be green let's format the document and now we can use our function oh before we use it i want it to be green i want the snake segments to be green okay now instead of returning dots we will return get item where we will pass x and y and our snake segments by default our function will return undefined if it won't meet any of the requirements that we have in our conditions so we can output a dot otherwise now let's run our application I run snake snake game and it only has apple so instead of snake segments map we need to use for off loop for const segment of snake segments we do same logic as before let's format the document and let's relaunch the game the layout is a bit screwed let's fix it we will need to add spaces before and after food item and uh, snake segment now it should be fine let's run it again okay now everything is aligned now every time we'll render our game field we'll go through our y and um, x coordinates and if on given coordinate we'll have item that we get from the get item function if it's food or if it's a snake segment we will render it on screen so we have it here now we need to make our snake to move in order to do this we will have to use timers I want to use timers with hooks so I use a use interval code from Dan Abramov's blog I will I will post a link in the description for this video uh, so we go to our ui.js and in sound in and inside our app we can now use and now first we need to import this component this hook const use interval equals require use interval now we can use it inside of our app component We'll use it like this, you, we say use interval, then we pass our callback that will need to be, that will be called every 50 milliseconds. And inside of it, we will move our snake depending on the direction it has. So let's go to the top of our file and define our directions constant, const directions. It will be an object. That will hold our directions so direction can be right 
then it will have x1 and y0. It can be left, then it x minus 1, y0, or it can be top. Then x will be 0 and y will be minus 1. And I forgot to put columns here. Or it can be bottom. Then x will also be 0 and y will be 1. We'll also have to have state to hold current direction of our snake. So I create a new state const direction and setter for it using react use state and by default it will be directions left and I forgot to put an equal equal sign now every time we call our Every time our use interval is, every time our use interval will be triggered, we will need to call some function that will calculate new snake position. So we define new function called the new snake position. It will get segments and direction. and return new snake position. Basically, at this point we can just go through each segment using segments map and for each segment we output a new object. It will have x same as segment x plus direction x and same with y. Now inside of our set interval, use interval, we can call set snake segments that will use callback to calculate new segments, new snake position using segments and direction let's format okay and now we can try running it and i messed it up again so instead of equals we need to use columns and let's try to run ag again Segments is not defined. It should be segments and now let's run again. Okay, and our snake moves. But first of all, it moved out of the screen and we don't see it anymore. And second, it was basically rolling instead of, instead of crawling like normal snakes do. So first let's make our snake stay inside of our field boundaries. Let's create a function limit by field field and it will take only one argument because we will limit by field for each argument separately and it will check if this argument is not more than field size otherwise we set it to zero or it's not less than zero because then we set it to field size minus one otherwise we will just let it be like it is so we ret return x now we need to wrap both calculations for x and for y inside of this limit by field function
limit by field. And now it should not go out of our field. Let's run the game again. And it works. Now let's make our snake crawl properly. Let's go to our new snake position function and change the logic a little bit. Now first thing we need to do is to get the snake's head. So we create new constant, const head. And here we use array destructuring to get head from segments. Here we get the first element and obviously it will be the head of the snake. And next what we do is we calculate new position for the head. So we create new constant, new head, and we assign new object to it. X will be head x plus direction x and same for y. And don't forget to wrap it into limit by field as well. Both fields x and y. Limit by field. Okay. Now instead of just mapping through segments, we need to return new array where first element will be new head and uh, the tail of the snake will be its segments but we need to take everything but the last segment so we do slice 0 minus 1 so we'll cut off the tail and let's run it again and now it crawls properly now we'll do a bunch of changes at once. We will need std in context to implement controlling snake with the keyboard. So inside of our layout, I get function set row mode and uh, reference to std in using use context and passing std in context, context there. I run use effect and call set row mode here to true to be able to basically intercept keyboard events from our std in. I subscribe to data event to the in and every time we get some data it will be key presses i check if it's one of the values i store in my arrow constants and inside of those constants we store their key codes let's run the game again and now we can control the snake next step would be to make it eat the apple because right now it just passes through let's stop the game and finally implement eating and growing. To implement eating, we will add a condition into the new snake position function. It will be the following. If new head position equals foot position, we will not remove the last segment of the snake. So it's if new head x equals food item x and new head y equals food item y then then we return non-cropped version of the snake so we basically remove this slice part so if we meet the food item then we return segments as they are with the new head position. So it will just move one segment forward, but we won't cut off the tail. Otherwise, we will return the shorter version of the snake. We also need to teleport our food item somehow. But let's first see how it works. Let's run snake game. I will try to capture this food. It's not that easy. Okay, it grows a bit. Let's try it again, yes, yes it does, it grows, okay enough. Let's stop it and let's think how we can move the food every time we meet it with uh, our sna snake head. Let's do the following. 
inside of our app code let's format it by the way we get head and we get it using snake segments now we can just have a condition where we check head x equals food item x and food item y food item y and if they and if they collapse we will call set food item with the new coordinates yeah i know right now we are not using it as a state but we'll do it in a second i will take it from here remove it put it right after snake segments const food item set food item and this will be react use state let's form a document every time head of our snake and food item will collide we will create new coordinates let's copy the calculation of our coordinates from the initialization script and format again let's run our application food item is not defined yeah of course I now need to pass it to every function that uses it. So new snake position doesn't use it. What uses it? Oh, it actually uses it. New snake position now needs to accept food item. And get item now needs to use food item. So we go to our app, new snake position needs the food item and get item needs food item should work now snake game hmm no food items let's think use state we get food item and set food item you know what first time it doesn't need to be random it will be 10 and 10 let's try it again And it works now. So every time we want to eat our food. So every time we try to eat the food, it appears in some other. Now we can also calculate if the snake intersects itself. To do it, we'll need to take not only head but also tail. It's all the remaining segments after head. And then compare if. Now we'll define a new constant. Intersects with itself. And it will equal tail sum this is an array method that will return true if some of the items conform the condition that will pass in our function segment segment x equals head x and segment y equals head 
y. We will move these calculations a bit higher to be able to move them in our interval code. So we will put them here and then we'll use intersects with itself to check if it's true then we don't use any timer, we pass null instead of interval, otherwise we pass 50 milliseconds, so our snake will, will move. Another thing we can do now is we can use intersect with itself to render conditionally uh, our screen, game screen, or, or game over message. Intersects with itself, if it's true then we render text game over otherwise we render our code now we form a document and it should be it now I have to be very careful because if I do this basically I pressed backwards and snake turned uh, around itself it will still count as collision and I will lose the game. Well, that's it. The code is pretty messy, but I hope it was fun little project to try out. And as you can see, even though Ink and React aren't made to create games, it is so flexible that you basically can create any type of project. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what would you like to see in my next tutorial. Press the like button and see you next time.